Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're going to start a new series on the HPE ProLiant DL380 Gen 10 server. In this video, we're going to specifically focus on processors, but in the video series as a whole, we're going to cover processors, RAM, hard drives, solid state drives. We're going to show you how to install VMware, how to install Microsoft Server Operating System. We're going to show you NIC, RAID, power supplies, how to put it in a rack, plus a bunch more. So click that like, smash that subscribe. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today. It's a little bit more about the HPE ProLiant DL380 Gen 10 server. This video will be specifically focused on processors, so let's hop in. There are two CPUs inside. It's an LGA3647 socket. It takes Intel scalable first-gen and second-gen processors. On the first-gen scalable side, that'll be your Intel Silver 4100, your Gold 5100, your Gold 6100, and your Platinum 8100. With your second-gen, it'll be 4200 Silver, 5200 gold, 6200 gold, and 8200 platinum. So you can kind of see it just literally moves up a digit from the first gen to the second gen, but that's how you can tell if you have a first gen or second gen scalable processor. Uh, now, uh, people ask us all the time, hey, what, uh, what CPUs do you recommend? We break it down into three categories, okay? So we have our low-end CPUs that are gonna be your more budget-friendly processors. We have our value procs, which are gonna cost a little bit more, but still not break the bank, but be you know higher speed and higher cores than low end and then we have our high end processors which are just going to be some of the top of the line more expensive processors that you can really get a ton of uh, of cores and space or speed depending on what you're looking for so let's go ahead and hop in so on the low end side there's three procs that we recommend they're all intel silver first gen that's going to be your 4110 your 4114 and your 4116 that's going to be 2.1 2.2 2.1 1 gigahertz it's going to be 8 core 10 core 12 core and all of them are very very budget friendly. Um, you're not getting a ton of cores overall and you're not getting a ton of speed overall, but again, very budget friendly and you put two of them in. Uh, that's great for a home lab server or uh, for a storage application. Uh, those are uh, really great processors, okay? Now on the value side, there's three procs that we recommend. That's gonna be uh, all first gen uh, gold processors and that's gonna be your 6126 gold, your 6132 and your 6142. All three of these are 2.6 gigahertz and it's going to be 12 core 14 core and 16 core and again it's a, a great sweet spot because you get good speed um, and you get higher cores but it's not going to break the bank overall and it's still a, a good spot right here so this is a great um, spot also for home lab guys or uh, for data centers who don't need the most uh, robust cpu but still want good speed and good cores uh, we build with these three processors all the time on a weekly basis because they are uh, you know again uh, favorites of ours as a whole and we recommend them customers all the time. All right, so there's three procs that we recommend on the high end side. That's gonna be Intel Gold 6242R, 6248R, and Intel Platinum 8256. Now, all three of these are great, great high end procs that are gonna be on the second gen scalable side. You're gonna get 20 core, 24 core, and four core. And you might wonder, why did I pick the four core? Well, because you get 3.8 gigahertz. So if you are worried about uh, having too many cores and having to pay Microsoft licensing, this is a great option that has low cores and a very f uh, fast speed. So that's a good uh, option for that type of scenario. Whereas the other two are gonna be uh, 3.1 and 3.0 gigahertz, uh, which are gonna be just much faster and uh, higher cores overall, which are uh, just great high in procs as a whole. So, all right, now that we know a little bit more about the, uh, the CPUs we recommend, uh, all the different speeds, the types of compatibilities. Let's show you how to physically install them, uh, but I'm gonna grab my ESD gear before we do that. All right, so I have my ESD gear on. We are safe to do our install and do our upgrade. So I like to lay out everything we're gonna need in advance. So I have our CPUs with the tray. I always like to have a tray so I can take the old CPUs out and have somewhere to put them. I like to do it for a couple of reasons. One, um, I might be able to reuse or resell them down the line. And two, I don't like that their uh, thermal paste is all over them. I just don't want to get my workstation messy so I like having a tray to toss them into so we'll have the new CPUs we're upgrading we have a t30 bit this is going to be needed to remove the heatsink, you cannot use a regular Phillips head. You do need a T30 bit. I have a clean rag here to clean off the uh, bottom of the heatsink as well as potentially clean off the old CPU. And then I have a thermal paste to put onto our new CPU before we install it. So that is everything that we're gonna need for this install. So we'll go ahead and toss everything to the side and we'll get started. So pop your latch, make sure it's set to unlock and remove your lid pretty much like any server you've been in before. 
All right, so we will need to remove the air baffle first in order to have access to our two CPUs, CPU one and CPU two. So the easiest way to do it, these two clips right here, you just kind of push this in and it'll unlock over here and then you can push this in and it'll pop out and you can just pull this right off, uh, very easy overall. So in order to uh, to do this, it's very similar. Uh, if you watched our 360 Gen 10 series, uh, the, seat, uh, the heat sinks are very similar in the sense of you have four screws that we are going to need to uh, loosen with our T30 bit. Uh, then you have the two points right here where the heat sink fits over. And then there's the black clip on the bottom that connects the heat sink and the CPU to make it install. So when we remove the heat sink, the CPU will actually come with it. So I like to start with the two screws in the middle, get them nice and loose, and then work my way to the screws on the outside. And I'm also a big fan of the manual screwdriver as opposed to an electric screwdriver. Uh, one, less chance of stripping it, and two, um, just a better feel for the heat sink coming off of the motherboard as a whole. So to each their own, but I'm a big fan of the manual one. So, All right, so now that everything is loosened, we're just going to lift this straight up, and then I'm going to flip it over just in case. I don't see any thermal paste on the side, but just in case if there's a mess at all, I always like to flip it over because as soon as we lift this up, our CPU pins are exposed. Exposed, and this is one where we have to be really careful around the pins. So just lift it straight up and then flip it over. And so you'll see uh, all the different uh, uh, little gold circles here are, and they're not really a circle, but you understand what I'm talking about, are for all the pins. So there's 3,647 pins in there, um, and they have to touch all these points. So it's a very important uh, that everything lines up nice and proper. So what we're going to need to do is to remove this black clip from the heat sink. So the easiest way to do that is there's gonna be these points right here that you're gonna push in and you'll see this comes off and loosens up. And then right here, this clip will push out. And so you have this whole side off over here. So then you need to come back over here and kind of the same deal. We're gonna push this in and it'll loosen that up. And then you can lift these clips up over here and then it is completely off. And you do need to be careful because there, there are, here's where all the thermal paste is. And luckily there's not too, too much on here, but if there is, and it is older, you can see it can kind of be flaky. You don't want it to fall into your uh, CPU pins that are exposed. So I am going to set this down over here and set our heat sink down. So in order to remove the CPU from the clip, this is a flexible plastic and there's essentially two points right here that clip it in. So you can kind of just pull this back a little bit and loosen one side. And when you loosen one side, you can just take it out. And now we can toss this into our tray over here. Now, I definitely always recommend to clean the clip as well because there will be thermal paste on here. So just a little quick wipe down will help. Okay, so this will be nice and clean. And then we need to clean our heat sink as well, which I'm gonna do off screen. because again, we just don't want any of the thermal paste to flake in to the exposed CPUs. So now we have a nice clean heat sink. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our new processor and we're gonna install it into the black clip. So people ask, well, how do I know uh, which way, how do I do this? Well, uh, the easiest way to do this is to pay attention right here. It's very kind of hard to see, but this gold triangle will line up with this carved out triangle right here, okay? So we're gonna come over here, we're gonna set this down where the two triangles match up, slide this in under the black clip right there. And then over here, because it's a flexible plastic, you're gonna have to be gentle, but pull this back to clip this over. And now you have it in, so you could flip it over and it's fully in there, okay? Now we're gonna install this onto the heat sink, but before we do, we need to put our messy thermal paste on. So you really don't have to put a ton of thermal paste on. We use the, uh, the big, uh, tubes just because we do so much of it, but essentially you just need a nice little dab in the middle and that'll be plenty. Um, and I like to just kind of rub the extra off so that I can clean it on the rag over here. And that's really all you need. And honestly, that might even be a little bit much, but it'll be fine. Um, and then we're gonna 
uh, line this up. Some people like to take the little plastic spreader and rub it around, which is uh, great as well. We like to do the, um, the, I call it the peanut butter and jelly smush method. As soon as the heat sink goes on it, there's no space and it'll push it all across here. So now we gotta figure out how do we line uh, this up proper? Well, it kind of goes back to the triangle. Right here, carved out very, very small in the bottom of this heat sink is the triangle. All right, so we're going to line the triangle up with the triangle right here. It might be hard to see on camera, but there's a little carved out triangle on the heat sink. So take this hole right here, this will go in. Take this hole, will go right here. And then the clip will go on the outside. So I actually like to start with the triangle side first, clip this over here, and then push this in. So that's how I like to start it. So we got that side full in, and then we'll push this side in over here. And then just make sure this last clip goes on over here. So now all four are fully on. And if I were to flip this over again, everything is completely hooked up and everything is safe to go. So now we're going to line this back up over here. So uh, essentially there's going to be uh, your two big holes that we're gonna line up with our pegs. And one of them is bigger than the other. And that kind of helps you to know which way to line this up. So we're gonna line this up with the big hole over here. And then the little hole back here, okay? And again, this peg in the back is smaller than this peg in the front. Um, if you try to do it vice versa, you'll notice it'll be harder to fit in. And they do that for a reason to make sure you install it the right way. So, all right, so now we're going to put our screws in. I like to do the outsides first to make sure there's a nice firm connection. And then I do the insides after. And so you can see, honestly, this is a pretty easy install overall. Uh, videos like this will definitely make it easy for you to do. Um, and if you're looking for any processors, uh, we can definitely help you out. Or if you're looking for a custom built server, we do HPE, Dell, IBM, Cisco, Supermicro. We do new, we do use, and we would love the opportunity to earn your data center or your home lab's business. Please email us at sales at cloudengine.com. That's sales at cloudengine.com. And hey, if you made it this far, click that like and smash that subscribe. Take care, guys.